excited to introduce our next speaker. She runs a fabulous restaurant called Stuff I Eat in Los Angeles. I was just there this summer. It was amazing. I was there the last time I was in LA. This woman actually was on the table dancing and singing. <laughs> like an amazing bundle of energy and just beautiful food and a happy experience. Just a warm experience to be there in the restaurant. I just want to mention that. She is a world-class chef, a fitness expert, a motivational speaker. And she has a very large fan base, apparently an Instagram and social media star. She also recently uh, guest starred in the HBO hit comedy series Insecure and was on the Hallmark Channel's Holding Family. So Don't forget the chew. Don't forget the chew. <laughs> ABC, chew, before it went off. And she was on the chew on ABC. She's on Instagram. This one, she is everywhere. <laughs> I saw her picture. I said, well, I know her. She looks at amazing. I'm very honored to welcome Chef Bobette. What's up, family? I'm so excited to be here. So are we. Yes, yes, yes. yes, I am. Okay. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about today. There was a woman in the other room. She just had some facts, honey. She had, woo, she was smart as a whip. <laughs> woo, did y'all hear her? Mm -hmm. I wanted y'all to hear her so bad because I was going to tell you what she said. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yes, I am Chef Bobette, and uh, I own a wonderful vegan restaurant. I've had it now since 19... Man, we opened the doors in, I forgot now, 2008. Wow. Yeah, so we celebrate, celebrate 10th year this year. It's been wonderful. And I just, I, do, I just so appreciate everybody's support. All of you, anybody who's been there, just spreading the word. Thank you so very much. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. I got a big giant mouth anyway. <laughs> But this is what I normally do whenever I have an opportunity to, to talk to all of you wonderful people. I like to just share my journey with you. I, I am sure about my journey. If I ain't sure about nothing else, I know where I came from. And, and, and that's what I wanna share with you today, if it's okay. It's okay. It's okay? Yeah. All right, cool. So. I met my current husband. I say current because he's number four. <laughs> yes, uh, I don't normally let too much grass grow under my feet. <laughs> but anyway, this particular guy had some information and he shared this information with me in a very critical time in my human experience. This, this journey, I, I was sick all the time, bloated. My skin was a wreck. I was just brain fog. I had eczema, asthma, the whole nine yards. Just, just you know, they told me not to moonwalk. <laughs> I, was, I don't do it well. But anyway, so I meet this guy and this guy is sharing a lot of information with me. Now he's not vegan. But he's just up on a lot of information. I thought he was cute. He gave me two books. He said, you need to read Fit for Life, Volumes 1 and 2 by Harvey and Marilyn Diamond and The Mucusless Diet Healing System by Professor Arnold Errett. I wasn't no big reader, <laughs> but he was cute. I, I just thought, you know, okay, I'll read the books. But when I read Fit for Life, especially volume one, it addressed all of, the, uh, all of my concerns in terms of not being able to digest my food. I just did not understand why I was all, I always had gas. I made the biggest belches of anybody on the planet. I know, I know. I could shake a house, it would feel like an earthquake <laughs> when I belch. I just could not digest my food. I did not understand why, um, Things could have such a stench to it. It was like, what's, I just feel just rotten all up inside, you know? So I read this book and I started practicing the information that was in the book. And then when I read the mucusless diet healing system, that's when the bright light came on. Now I'm just a almost 68 year old diva <laughs> from South Central LA, that's right. <laughs> on the east side of 
Los Angeles. I'm proud to be one of the original East Siders. And uh, my mother was a cook. She worked, for, she worked as a domestic worker, so she cooked all the time for other folks, and she brought all of them good vittles home for us. And I was constantly having asthma attacks. I didn't know why. She was also a smoker, l and I'll never forget l and cigarettes, and she was, you know, that's, <laughs> blow it right in your face. I didn't understand why I would wake up in the middle of the night and I couldn't breathe. Um, I had so much eczema on me that kids teased me all the time. And my mother had a third grade education. She couldn't read, bless her. She was a, an amazing woman. But ignorance sometimes just kind of, it just kind of gets in the way. My mother used to put Tiger Bomb on my eczema. Can y'all imagine what I felt like? I love that. It itch and it burn. No. But I was, <laughs> I, was, I was a wipeout. I'm telling you. And this lady did not understand. She thought maybe the dust in the carpets. My mother, we were poor people. My mother, you could not, if she was in, in Chevy at Hills, they could not throw away a piece of carpet without her picking it up, bringing it home. <laughs> and she put the carpet on the floor. And so she would think, oh, this baby must have been, maybe this dust and this carpet is making her have these asthma attacks. No, mom, it was the milk, it was the cheese, it was the, all the stuff you were giving me, it was the cigarettes, it was all of it. It wasn't the carpet, but she put aluminum on the floor. I mean, what you call linoleum on the floor anyway, just trying to help her baby. And I went through that. Not only did I go through that, I went through child molestation, I was abused because I had to, my mother was a worker, so I had to go live with someone who was often extremely cruel to me. So I went through that. I would be there all week long with that person. And then on the weekends, I had to now be with the person that was molesting me. So my childhood was rough to say the least. It was rough. And as I began to grow older, I got into my first relationship because he was a childhood friend. He was addicted to heroin. And then as time went on, I found myself all bundled up with cocaine. I decided I was gonna smoke it. Ooh, it's a new way. It's a brand new way to do cocaine. You know, everybody's snorting it, but it's a brand new way. You can smoke it now. I didn't realize that as soon as I took the first hit, I was addicted. And there was a time when I did not ever crawl around on the floor unless I was looking for a rock. Now I don't get down there unless I'm doing some push-ups. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't easy. It wasn't always easy. And diet did not, the, the, the way that I was living my life did not assist me at all. I was married three times before I met the genius. <laughs> We're just going to call him the genius. <laughs> And, and it was all very, very, very difficult. It was, there, there was, it was s relationships that I had no business being in, but I don't look back with any regrets. Because guess what? Had I not traveled that road, mm -hmm. I would not be standing here in front of you today. So it's all good. No matter how I make you feel when I tell you what I went through, I'm okay. I'm healed. I'm all right. I heard Nora Jones say something on a song the other day. She said, I finally figured out where I'm supposed to be. I had lost my key, but I finally found it to unlock the door. I finally, I just messed that saying all up, but <laughs> I probably need to read it. <laughs> I, put, I put it on my phone in my notes, but <laughs> Anyway, I'm here today because I did make the life changes. And I, at first when I became, got on this vegan journey, this particular, this fourth guy is the one that got me to running. He, the, he took me up to Griffith Park for my very first date with him. And he ran the whole hill backwards, 1,650 feet straight up, whole hill backwards. Man, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm so tired right now. Ooh, how many more? 
how many more hills? And he would just be just this one right around the corner. I was like, something's wrong with this man. But after we got done with the run, I thought to myself, if this guy can run this thing backwards, one day I am going to be able to stay maybe in a walking mode. In a, no, I got that wrong too. Help me tear. Put up num put up here. She got fingers for me when I mess up, you know, number one, number two, number three. Anyway, no. I'm gonna stay in a running mode, but at a walker's pace. And right today, I don't care if I stay away from Griffith Park for two years. When I get back up there, I can get right in that pace. It's because my whole outlook on life and everything began to change as I started reading and understanding who I was and, and, and that I'm only just a tiny little part of this whole entire thing. This whole thing. I'm just a speck. And I live on this planet and it is my home and it is not just about me and the eczema that I suffered with or the asthma or the molestation or any of that stuff. It's about all of it. Would you not agree? It is about all of it. So you can't just act, act like you're human, you walk upright and you, you speak these words out of your mouth and now you are the one you just get to do whatever you want with everybody else. No, no. And I came to realize that. And that this gentleman that I'm with, we've been married now. We got married in 1992. What is this? 2018? Dang, we old. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> But I'm just saying this person came into my world at such a really critical time because I did not know where I was going. I did not know what I was going to do with the way that I felt. And so then when I gained all this information and became one with all of it and not separating myself with anything because everything that I need, everything that I want, I already have. I already have it. And so this just my whole world just began to explode. And when we decided to share our vegan cuisine with the masses, I ain't no chef. I ain't been to chef school. I don't even know how to hold a knife right. You know, they just, I got a restaurant. They call me Chef Babette and that's fine. You know, but the bottom line is I'm just sharing my, my meals with all of you. And, and when you come into our spot, I want you to feel good when you come in there like you're sitting down at your mama's house, you know? And so, yeah, sometimes you come in there, I might jump up on the table. I used to sing the Star Spangled Banner, but everybody started taking a knee. So. <laughs> I just thought maybe, maybe I'll just leave that song alone and just sing the Stuff I Eat song. But yeah, I, I began to change, change my diet and it was really lovely. I found that all of the, the trouble that I was having, the eczema, asthma, uh, skin issues, everything went away. It all went away. And, and it was consistent. The more I took care of myself, now I eat more raw than I do cooked. My preference is life. Because now I, I, I woke up, I understand that to sustain life, you need to consume life. If every meal you eat every single day is cooked and dead, where do you get the life to sustain yours? So I began to eat more and more live food that's more appealing to me. I, my restaurant, however, sells a transitional menu. It's a menu for anybody coming in that's heavy on the, the, the standard American diet and you will want to come in and just have some good tasty food, stuff that you recognize, stuff I eat is your spot. And that we did that on purpose because we understood to be able to change, you have to be willing to try it. And if it doesn't taste right, we eat for comfort. Mm. We are generally gonna back away from it. So 
we, we came up with a fantastic menu, food that people just love. Come on, who don't love a taco? Man, you can eat a taco in so many different ways. Burritos, quesadillas. I even got a soul food platter. We got kale greens, black eyed peas, macaroni and cheese. We got potato salad, coleslaw. I don't know why you need both of them with that plate, but <laughs> gets a little gluttonous. But people, people love it. I don't get into some of the, 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 the textured uh, meat kind of stuff. We decided we weren't going to sell it because we don't eat it. The name of the restaurant is Stuff I Eat. So we, we do use tofu. Um, I, I make a sauces out of some silken tofu. I use a lot of nuts. I make raw dishes. I make cooked dishes. And now... I'm just having a great time prepping food, whether it's raw or cooked. When there was a time I was hiding from the kitchen, I didn't want to have anything to do with it. But gosh, you guys, we are one with all of this. So I don't know how many of you in here are vegan, but for those of you who are transitioning or considering it, consider everybody, consider the whole planet, consider all of it, and consider the fact that you don't need to kill anything to sustain your life. And when you wanna to talk to me about vegetables, plants being sentient, I agree. But they also have a season. Guess what? That's when I eat them. <laughs> Animals have a lifetime, just like us. They have babies, they have feelings, they have diseases, but the one thing they have that we don't have, they know what to eat. We might shove something down their throats, but they, they know what to eat. And they don't have to medicate themselves after they eat it. Not unless we're giving them something that's making them sick. But on their own, it does not make sense for humans to have to actually medicate yourself after you eat. Come on now. You got to, you got to take a Tums. Or you got to go to the doctor and the doctor be like, now you take these as soon as you, as soon as you eat, you just swallow this. And uh, come on now. That's not making sense. That's not making sense. When, guess what? All medication is what? Liver toxic. Mm. All of it is. So they, it grows, everything grows right up out the ground. Man, the intelligence made it simple for us. It just grows right out the ground. And most of the times you don't even have to cook it. You just pick it and eat it. So that's why I like to share my story because guess what? I don't care who in the government would be in here. You can't make me eat animal pus if I don't want to eat it. <laughs> I don't want to eat nothing pussy. <laughs> and whenever you stick it in the oven and you pull it out and you cut it open and the stuff oozing out of it, that is not juice. They lie. That lion. <laughs> Those are body fluids. Pus. <laughs> to have some chicken soup. Y'all heard me say it, chicken pus soup. Come on over. I just made a big old giant pot of pussy chicken soup. And I threw some vegetables in it. And we're gonna have it with some cornbread. You are, you are. So, <laughs> I'm just saying. Now you may be okay eating it. Not me. I just care not to. So I'm very careful about what I ingest now. I'll be 68 years old in December. December 7th. Y'all remember Pearl Harbor Day. You'll never forget, Chef Babette was born on this day. I can do a four minute plank. I, de I decided, you know what? Longevity's great, but uh, if you're laying flat on your back <laughs> and you can't move, you stuck. I want to be able to move. I want to be able to get down and get back up. I know that means I got to keep my core strong 
and I have to move. And I'm, I was determined that I was gonna turn 50 and put them little soft weird shoes on, get a little crooked wig and a smock and go sit down in front of the TV and watch Judge Judy all day. <laughs> Wasn't gonna be my reality. I got me some cute little red high heel shoes. I bought these in, where were we? In London? Oh yes, that's right, 68 years old. I can still wear my high heel shoes with my little hot outfit and don't nobody know I'm 68. <laughs> but I love my life. I love what I give back to the planet because it's my home. And I'd love for all of you, if you're not on that page, think about it. Think about this is, this is all we got, y'all. This planet. I mean, they talking about going, they talking about sending the military out of space. What they trying to do, leave us? What? So my thing is, nah, I'm cool with this one down here. You know, I wanna be a part of taking care of it. I wanna be a part of the animals being able to live freely and roam freely and enjoy a lifetime. I wanna be a part of allowing that to happen. It is my obligation as a part of the human species to take care of my home. And that is what I plan to do. This thing got nothing to do with color, religion, nothing else. It's where you live. And it's all of us, the animals, all the trees, all of it. We need to take care of our home. And that is my journey. That is what I'm into right now. I'm into all kind of activism. I want to love each and every one of you. I don't want to say anything nasty to hurt you. And if I do, I put the mirror in front of my face and I take responsibility for the words that come out of my mouth. I will apologize to you. Yeah. That is when you grow up and you become an adult. You don't shift the blame on anybody else. And when we do anything, it's like a lady out there got some makeup, child. I love me some makeup, but I don't know what I got on my face today. So I gotta change up. If I really am saying I'm going to do the whole thing correctly, it's not just about the soap that I choose to bathe in. It's also the paint that I put on my skin. Where is it coming from? Are they hurting animals? Are they testing? Are they doing all this stuff? I mean, because you can't just be like, I'm a little bit in it. No, you gotta be all the way in it or shut up, please. So, y'all wanna learn my song to my store, my store song? I ain't got nothing else to teach y'all, but anyway. So the name of the store is Stuff I Eat. And the address is 114 North Market Street. So this is what I normally do. I love you. I love you too, girl. All right, so I'm going to sing it. I'll sing it twice. And then you guys sing it on the third time. Is that a deal? Okay, and then whenever you fly into LAX or whenever you drive to Los Angeles and it's not a Monday, where are you coming to eat? Stuff I That's what I'm talking about? All right, so here it goes. Stuff I eat, stuff I eat. If you don't want me, try the stuff I eat. 114 North Market Street in Inglewood, California. <laughs> hey! All right. So I'm going to do it one more time. You guys should, it's simple. You guys should have it on the third time. But I just think that the big group will sound really good singing my song. All right, here goes. I'm going to speed it up a little bit. And then y'all could just put, give me a little soul, you know, like, hmm. Okay, so here you go. Stuff I eat. Stuff I eat, and if you don't want me, try the stuff I eat. 114 North Market Street in Inglewood, California. But y'all were supposed to sing on the third time. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Trying to give lessons and instructions, and y'all ain't paying no attention. All right, so it's your turn. Two, three, where y'all going? Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. She's the only one. 
get one. You better sing. Ass okay, you better sing this song. <laughs> Two, three. Stuff I eat, stuff I eat. And if you don't want me, try to stuff I eat. 114 North Market Street. Where? In Eaglewood, California. Woo! Ask questions, you still have time. You got 40, you got another 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> cash in on cashews, 50 recipes using the cashew nut. If you don't have the book, order the book. And you can order on Amazon or you can order from moi. Chefbabette.com. Uh, what else I got? You got 10 more minutes. Oh, no, I mean, what else you tell me? Some questions. Oh, anybody have any questions? <laughs> anybody want, where you going? Where you going? Where you going? <laughs> huh? So I'm done. Okay, then, bye.